Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Andreas Borchert. I'm one of the founders and one of the two managing directors of Plan Horizon. Thank you very much for joining us here today for our second annual ServiceNow Strategic Portfolio Management Conference and spending some time here with us, uh, learning from some of our customers, from uh, James Ramsey from ServiceNow and from some of my colleagues, and discussing things all around uh, strategic portfolio management. So who is Plan Horizon? Um, we are actually already uh, about 16 years in the market. In all these 16 years, we, we always focused uh, on the area of enterprise project portfolio management, resource management, uh, agile methods, et cetera, et cetera. We, we have not done this uh, uh, 17 years with, uh, with ServiceNow. So in the past, we also worked with uh, some of the well-known tools in this market space. Uh, which we are now replacing with, with ServiceNow uh, Strategic Portfolio Management. Uh, we work um, with ServiceNow as a pure play partner uh, since uh, almost uh, seven years. Uh, we are one of the very few partners worldwide, probably the only one, uh, to my knowledge, it might be true, the only one who's actually focusing very much on the strategic portfolio management on consulting and implementation all around this, this model. So today uh, we, we hear from customers and share some best practices, et cetera. And I will lead you uh, through this, uh, through our agenda in a second. Um, one more thing, uh, if you're interested in, in more content around strategic portfolio management, uh, please go to our YouTube channel. We have, um, content there from, from other webinars we did from, from the conference from last year. We have uh, customer interviews with Aldi, for example. Uh, we have uh, a, a lot of videos around uh, processes related to SPM, both on the IT side about Scrum and SAFE, also on the business side with new product development, stage gate processes and other things. And in the next year, we will produce quite a few video casts around what we do, what we learn from our project, and also together with customers. Um, next presentation is not about strategic portfolio management, but about application portfolio management, uh, a related area. So uh, I know Günther Feigl, and we actually work for um, Vaca Humi for the last five years, if I remember correctly. And uh, so it has been a longer journey. Uh, in the first couple of years, we uh, did an initial implementation of strategic portfolio management, which we then refined in a number of projects. And if I remember also, we actually had already five years ago, uh, a discussion about application portfolio management, but then obviously the discussions took a little bit longer time, uh, but this year it was done successfully. So the implementation is completed and we actually replaced an enterprise architecture management system, Lean IX. So very interested to hear from uh, Günther Feige from Vaka Chemie and uh, from David Jaunik, our colleague who joined us about half a year ago um, uh, about what are the, the business reasons behind that? How did they go? What did you learn in the project? Uh, what was the focus, et cetera? But maybe Günther, you can start out saying a couple of words about you and David, you, same for you. Yeah, thank you, Andreas. Um, I hope you can hear me well enough and also see me. If you can... Yes, yes. Right. thank you. Okay, perfect. Okay. Yeah, as um, mentioned, my name is Günther Feige. I'm uh, the head of IT service management within Rocket Um Within that department, it's not really basic IT service management, but a little bit more like strategic portfolio management as well, uh, together with some very central um, areas that we have, especially uh, with including a team that is called platform configuration, which means everything that happens in the platform service now uh, is provided by my department. So one thing, a little bit to correct, we are not finished yet, Andreas, and you know that the, the final rollout has not taken place, but we are far enough to 
have a conversation like this and demonstrate what we had in mind at the very beginning and where we come through during the projects. Okay, if you go to the next slide. Yeah, two slides uh, concerning Walker as a company. Uh, many of us don't know the company, but everybody I believe has some parts from us. We are not producing for end users, but we are strong in automotive and transport of the way um, construction. And you can read this. Uh, we have four business divisions um, dealing with things like renewable energies in terms of hyper pure silicon and things like that. Uh, I think every second chip in the world uses vacuum material. One of the competitors is, is China in this respect, but we are producing a lot of uh, silicon for the, um, for the industry. Okay, yeah, as you can see, and uh, this is important in, in order to um, see where we come from and we are um, a global company. We are definitely not as big as, as Allianz or other players in this market, but we are um, also spread over the world. As you can see here, the main, the headquarter is in Munich in Germany, but we have um, sites in, in the US as well as in uh, Asia, China, as you can see here on the orange dots, we, are, uh, we have 26 production sites. Um, and this is what we provide services for uh, on a, in, within a centralized IT uh, in Burghausen and Munich. Yeah, well, as Andrea mentioned at the very beginning, we had um, kind of this situation. I don't want to go too much into, into the details, but you see that um, I, uh, ServiceNow was our main and still is our main IT service management platform. And for applications, business processes, capabilities, and stuff like that, we have uh, another platform in place, LeanIX. And to be really honest, LeanIX is not a very bad product, but the advantages that we would have uh, in the end will come later during this presentation. The main area are the applications that currently sit in LeanIX as a separate platform. And we considered um, developing a lot of interfaces to have the data out of LeanIX in service now, because applications are part of the CSDM, which we will see on the on the next slide then. Uh, but in order to um, provide all the services in IT service management, the first the the first ideas at the beginning of the complete story was that we thought about the common service data model providing all the information from IT service management, basic issues like the CMDB uh, in the orange part of the common service data model uh, to the business relation uh, and the business services to the gray part. All of it is in service now at this point in time. The only area that we don't have all the data in service now is the blue part on the upper left area, which um, contains the applications. And then the question was at the very beginning, is this the architecture that we want to follow in the future or would we have any advantages providing or moving applications also into service now to set up the complete common service data model 3.0 as here. And if you go into the next slide, you will see a lot more details, which is based on, on the tables in service now on the out of box functionality. And I think uh, what you see in, in the middle part, the blue part and the green part, you also see what uh, Andreas mentioned already, that the idea was to have not only SPM, so the service portfolio, I, I know that there have been 
um, switches and namings, the service portfolio and the application portfolio in one system. So that was the idea at the very beginning, how to provide those uh, data out of one system. And at the very beginning, I think this was then um, the next slide. And David, then I will hand over to you um, about the details. Yeah, at the beginning, we had an evaluation process together with Plan Horizon the, at the very beginning. And we had five use cases in LinaX, and we had to evaluate all those use cases if everything is possible out of service now as well. Because the functionality, as I mentioned at the beginning, is now in LinaX, which is not a bad platform, but without interfaces and a lot of other reasons as well. Um, we thought about moving those into ServiceNow and the evaluation was the first step. After this first step, um, we found out that the possible implementation plan to move all the functionality out of Linux into ServiceNow would take approximately nine months implementation time. Um, and concerning all those details, David, I would ask you to give us more on the technical part. Perfect. First of all, thank you, Günther, for the introduction and also to show us the overview why Waka has joined to go along with the CSDM 3.0. It's another big point, I think, from the evaluation was also to understand what are the core functionalities and how service now uh, can provide their uh, value to Waka also uh, and how we can uh, map the points what we are needing to, uh, that is best to the out of the box things and also uh, to discuss all the integration purposes how can we fit in into the uh, cmdb with it so so why waka has started the challenge first of all the constant single source of truth this was always one pain point they would like to have one big view according to the system as you have said before there we see, have one look on our entire cmdb where we see all the entities beginning from the design to the operational one and also to the other to the business view where we are selling all the services uh up to the business and to our other consumers. Uh, there also, it was a big need for an application lifecycle workflow automation. Before of that, it was a process in place. There are sometimes documents are manually interchanged and some kind of application governance has exist. But what have we done? Uh, there, uh, we have identified many points what we must uh, automate because of the capabilities what ServiceNow is delivering, also in the context of the application portfolio management. And also a, an additional big point was the alignment between uh, service portfolio management and uh, PPM uh, governance what is already in the place to integrating uh, integrating there all the APM points and the topics. So for us to achieve that, what were the points? All the challenges what we had continuously at the beginning of the project, we've started with a small PLC for uh, one domain, for the procurement domain. Based on the findings, what we had constantly, we are including that in our project plan and incrementally are uh, defining all the stories and the packages what we need to implement there uh, to ensure that we are all really getting all the functionality uh, delivered in our release one, uh, what are the enterprise architects are expecting. The other point was uh, very often uh, we had uh, discussions about enterprise architecture management and application portfolio management. Service now application portfolio management, as the name it says, it focuses on application portfolio management. We don't would like to cover uh, with the solution and enter uh, enterprise architecture management process. We focus uh, to digitalize the application portfolio and to enhance the usability of the CSDM. Another big point was also, we always have to consider that not only stakeholders from the enterprise architecture or from the IT should join the project and should uh, go together with the implementation. Uh, it's also a uh, project what are uh, covering the entire organization. You must make many alignment also with your complex enterprise strategy and there with all the stakeholders, what do you there have to ensure that we, you have the, the right understanding also from the capabilities and how you would you measure them and the other points in future. Also, very often at the beginning, uh, 
we had one data source and the data source is growing and growing. And then uh, one big, very big challenge for us was to tailor that down at the end of the release one to ensure we had there the clean structure and the clean information, what we are needing, what, what we would like to have in future in our application portfolio. Also, another big point was the integration with the service and uh, project portfolio, what I have said before. Also there to ensure because uh, in parallel for service portfolio, many points are implemented at Wacker and there we must ensure that especially in the demand management process, if our steps doing and there are some kind of an assessment and measurement, uh, depending on the demand uh, what the business ha has said, that that is all done before we are starting with the definition of the service portfolio. There we have done an uh, integrated uh, 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 point. Also an additional point was uh, from the technology management perspective that was very interesting for us. Uh, normally it's, it's very easy to start. Uh, you, you can start with the software models if you have a, a software asset management foundation at least in place. Uh, one big uh, point was for us, we must include uh, all from the old system, all the existing software models. And for that, because uh, we can't uh, easily activate uh, the software asset management foundation because already some customization is done in, on, on the data entities. There, the big point for us was uh, we must find a way uh, to ensure that we are setting up uh, based on that data in the data structure to ensure that in future we can start with, with them. And also at least uh, to en enable uh, the enterprise architects, domain architects and all the other people what are working inside of the process uh, that they are understanding uh, what does it mean application rationalization in the case of service now, how it should be done and what are all the steps what we must do there. Okay. Uh, let, let me add one, one sentence here, David, because one of the key questions at the very beginning of this project was, how do we handle enterprise architecture management? But asking the question to all stakeholders in this complete process, we found out that most questions out of enterprise architecture management can be answered using APM as well. So the the overall enterprise architecture management was considered not as important as a combination of application portfolio into ServiceNow. That was the main reason why we considered having an interface between enterprise architecture and application portfolio outside of ServiceNow. Thanks for that. I think you, you're, uh, that's true. That was a very, I think also a big point and an advantage what we have now with service now. All the points integrated in one platform also to include the operate data from the operational processes and the other points. And also, but uh, first of all, from the implement highlights what we had in the implementation, uh, as you all, that also pays in the single source of truth. Now we had it for the business application. There also for the business application governance, we had no uh, uh, process in place uh, where all this can be done inside of service now. Also the entire life cycle could be uh, uh, designed there and is lived there with, with the workflows. And we also uh, have connected heavily to the CSDM what we have said before. Additional to uh, about the topic with the workflows, we has also defined their uh, fulfillment structure. That means we had defined a business application request to ensure that all the tasks and the points what they must consider in their application governance are uh, documented and done in a structured form. They are, that's all uh, now automated, created, and all from the people are doing uh, efficient in time if they are needing it. And also, uh, as I have said before, now we had the full integration with the service portfolio and the project portfolio management processes, especially inside of the demand management process to ensure when the demand is coming up, uh, that also all the architecture relevant topics are covered uh, from the APM perspective. Thanks for your attention.
Well, uh, thanks, uh, David and Günther. Let's take a look here. Uh, there is already a question, but before I read that, uh, I want to highlight one of the uh, findings you, you reported here, one of the things you said. Uh, Günther, I think you said that there was a lean IX, and that's actually doing its job, but it's outside of service now. And then, of course, you have a big advantage just from the network effects you have uh, with uh, a platform. And, and David, I think you had it on one of your slides. That is the question. You know, you have, this is the old best of breed versus platform approach. I see the same thing with strategic portfolio management. So what we see is that no matter what it is, uh, uh, a spot solution project portfolio management, enterprise project portfolio management, which is outside the platform, always has a lot of disadvantages. And especially for SPM, which is the only module in service now, uh, I know some things about, I think also uh, compared with, with other market leading solutions, the, the strategic portfolio management is by now, end of 2022, way ahead of every other solution, but other people might come to, to different conclusions there. But the platform approach will be the best of breed approach uh, in the future. Um, one interest, I, I will read the question from, from the audience now. One interesting information for me would be to know if you were able to change to Snow APM directly out of the box of there, or if there was any customizations. Uh, one of the biggest advantages also with the, especially with the example, what I have said before, with the technology management implementation, that's uh, one uh, module what you have inside of the application portfolio management scope. Uh, there, we always had used all the uh, points out of the box and most of the things are configured. We don't have to do there some customization. We would, uh, uh, at the beginning, we would like to ensure that always if new functionality is coming in, we can easily start with it in future. That was uh, at the, also at the beginning, always when we're evaluating uh, what stories should be getting in for implementation. First of all, we, we, uh, we evaluate is that really, uh, can we uh, cover that with out of the box? And if it were a customization, we are making more rounds. And often at the end, there, uh, the result for us was no, there, uh, we can also do it with the out of the box functionality. We have found more ways. Most of the things are really configured. Well, to, to give you an overall answer about that, um, this was one of the, major issues when starting with ServiceNow and also the CSDM 3.0. We, we, we did not want to talk only about uh, standards and out of the box functionality. We want to keep it through the whole scenario. So in, just in case it would not have been necessary, uh, possible to use out of the box functionality to a very high extent, we would have never done it because we still have the possibility to do an upgrade as an example within two to three weeks because we want to use out of the box functionality as far as possible. Which is always a very good idea. I think uh, Daniel and Cruz mentioned something about that in their presentation back to out of the box standard. That's what we see in the long run customers uh, who focus very strong on the out-of-the-box standards uh, are, are faring much better with their solutions. Another question here. What were the five use cases that LinaX and ServiceNow required nine months implementation plan? I think that's probably a misunderstanding. And also I know that the project, actual project did not take nine months. And are now all five use cases possible without LinaX? Günther, David, can you answer this one? Um, yes, I can. First of all, I need to, to add the five use cases. I can, that's not a problem, but I will um, do that later on in, in the chat or question answers area so that you can see the five use cases. And no, we cannot use all those use cases to 100%. The question is, what was really important um, within the five use cases? And every important and and well used functionality is now possible in service now. Otherwise we would not have been successful. In some areas, 
we saw that we had a lot of implementation work in Linux, but nearly nobody used it. And we did not focus on this functionality any longer. So we said we want to have everything in service now that is necessary. And that works, by the way, to 100%. That is great. David, can you say, can you give some information about the actual duration of the project? Günther mentioned it's not live yet. That was my mistake. But I think it would be pretty much ready to go live. And there are other reasons uh, uh, why it didn't go live now. But I think it's pretty much completed. And what was the actual duration of the project, David? I think the actual duration for the release one was really five and a half up to six months. And then we are uh, ready to go live with all the functionality what we are needing. For the second one, that's including the time frame up to the nine months, uh, there we have included some extended reports and, and the other points what we are needing there. But from the core functionality, what we have said, we need that in future uh, to start uh, with release one there we had all delivered in five and a half up to six months. Okay. Yeah, I can I can add. We don't have any more questions. I can add here that the the business case uh, for uh, replacing LinaX with ServiceNow APM seems to be uh, present in, in many companies. So we already have some opportunities where we discuss with customers how we can do the same thing for them.